Deben Corns are alive with a kind of push-pull. He gives and takes away. He's constantly reworking the surface. And when you stand in front of it, you see all the traces of lines that are drawn and then painted over. You see what look like accidents. You see accretions. You see drips. You see erasures. The process, the time that he takes to paint them is shown to you through all the markings on the canvas. But what's so remarkable is that when they're done, they come together in the most beautiful balanced resolution. Richard D. Bincorn's Ocean Park Number no. 40 dates from 1971 and is really one of the most sublime examples of this series that occupied him for the better part of 20 years. Stephen Korn began his career in San Francisco, and he was an artist who alternated between figuration and abstraction throughout his career. He was very engaged with abstract expressionism with artists such as Clifford Still and Willem de Kooning, and his earliest works had that kind of brushy, gestural mode to them. But interestingly, in the 60s, he also was very influenced by Bay Area figuration in San Francisco and began painting in a figurative style. Diebenkorn had the advantage of a lot of travel. He was able to go to the Soviet Union and see the wonderful Matisses in the collections of the Tretyakov and Pushkin Museum. And in 1966, relocated to Southern California, to Los Angeles. He moved to Santa Monica, into an area that was kind of scruffy, a real artistic community, known as Ocean Park, and began this series of works. And with that turn to abstraction, he never turned back to figuration again. When Diebenkorn moved to Santa Monica, he first moved into a windowless studio, but was soon able to take the studio of fellow painter Sam Francis which had beautiful windows and light and allowed him to enlarge his scale. Looking out through these windows in Santa Monica, he would have seen the beach, the boardwalk, the beautiful expanse of sky, and the Pacific Ocean, but also the grid of the streets below. He was able to merge the idea of the topography of looking down onto the street, onto the beach, the aerial perspective, but also the view from the window. Number 40 was one of the earlier Ocean Park pictures, but it was quite important in its history in that it graced the cover of Marlboro Gallery's catalog of Diebenkorn's Ocean Park show in 1971. This is a painting where blue really is the protagonist, mainly this exquisite teal blue that reminds you of the sea, of the ocean but also playing that blue off against different variations, a kind of lavender color, a royal blue, a band of blue at the left edge. And interspersed with the blue is this beautiful peachy salmon color. Does it remind us of sand? Possibly. The point is with Diebenkorn, while there are references to nature and can be read that way, in the end they're just totally abstract and then that verdant green. So you have the elements of landscape here in terms of color, but yet the hull is just completely abstract, but so harmonious. He makes his canvases breathe in the most palpable way, but as important as the color is, is the line and the structure. Many people also speak about Mondrian as another precedent for the structure of Diebenkorn's canvases, and indeed there is that, but yet Diebenkorns are alive. I think within the genre of geometric abstraction, Diebenkorn was able to really mine the depths of something that had some limitations in terms of its structure, but make infinite variations so that each one is its own poetic ensemble. There's no other artist like that who's able to combine the color and geometry of Diebenkorn in such a poetic way.